Hey guys and girls, Hugh Coscoelho here. In this quick video, we're gonna talk about line, different line types and what I use each one for. So the different line types are gonna be braid, monofilament, and fluorocarbon. Let's start with braid. What are its advantages, what's its characteristics, and what do I use it for? So a braided line is gonna be an opaque line. You can see this is blue line. It's not clear at all. Fish are gonna see this really, really well in the water. What it does, what its advantages are, is it has no stretch. So this is giving me a direct connection to that fish at all time. If it went ahead and sniffed at my bait down there underneath the water, I'd feel it in my line, I'd feel it in my rod, and I'd feel it in my hands. That's what's really great about braid is it's very, very sensitive. Other things that it's really good for is it floats compared to other lines like fluorocarbon. Braid is going to sit on top of the water, so it's very good for, for top waters, uh, frogs, but it's also going to be a much stronger line. It doesn't fray because it's a braided line. There's a bunch of different parts of it. Sometimes there's eight, sometimes there's 16 different lines inside this braided line. It's going to be much stronger. So most of the time when I use braid, I'm actually using it in a higher pound test than I would fluorocarbon or monofilament. 30, 45, 50, even all the way up to 65. And some people use 80 pound test braid. So why do we use such high pound tests for braid? High pound test braid is going to be really good when we're fishing in very heavy cover. This is going to be in grass, lily pads, some very heavy cover. And I'm not trying to catch 80 pound fish with 80 pound braid. I just want to make sure that my line doesn't break because I need to get that fish out of that cover and into the boat or onto the shore. What braid is going to do is because it's braid is actually going to slice through some of that grass. It's going to be a lot easier to get that fish in the boat than something like monofilament or fluorocarbon, which are gonna stretch a little bit. So I've got this in blue braid. This is the braid I use on my spinning reel. I use it because I need a lot more sensitivity when I'm throwing my lighter, more finesse baits on my spinning reel. But it comes in blue. It also comes in other colors, yellow, red. So it's a lot easier to see on top of the water. You can see if you have a bite, you can see if your line's still sinking. Or they make it in more natural colors, brown and green. That's a lot of time what I'll be throwing if I'm throwing a direct connection to my lure in that heavy cover. With this braided line, there's no memory to it at all. And memory is when you put your line on a spool, it's gonna remember the shape that it was in and it's gonna cause a lot of backlash. It's just gonna cause a lot of knots in your line. That doesn't really happen with braid. It has no memory, it's very pliable. So it lasts a very, very long time. I maybe change my braid out once every year. The next line type we're gonna be talking about is monofilament. Monofilament definitely has its place in my boat. I don't use it very much. When I need it, I love it. Typical line you get at Walmart or when you first get your first reel or anything like that. Monofilament is going to be see-through. It's going to be clear. Usually comes in white, green. Sometimes it comes in red. I usually get clear. What it's going to do, what its advantages are, is it's going to float similar to braid. So I can throw this for top water lures like poppers and spooks. One thing it's not as great at is it's going to stretch a lot. This could be good for more reaction style baits. It could be good for those top waters because they have treble hooked baits. I want to make sure if that fish jumps, it's not going to just jump off. If I throw a popper on or a spook on that straight braid, it could jump off very easily because there's no give in that line at all to where when it shakes its head, it's getting slack every time. That's not going to happen with this monofilament. So monofilament is not very abrasion resistant. It could rub against something and break pretty easily. So monofilament can stay on your reel for a pretty long time and not get very much memory. It's not going to cause a lot of backlashes or any knots or anything like that. The downside to monofilament is that it does stretch. So this is not going to be very sensitive when I'm trying to use jigs, when I'm trying to use other dragging baits, where I need sensitivity through my rod to feel that bite. The other thing is, is when I set the hook, if I'm using only monofilament on my reel, is I'm not going to get a good hookup ratio on those jigs, those Carolina rigs. Imagine if I make a very far cast with a Texas rig and I'm dragging it, I might not feel that bite. When I do feel that bite, and I set the hook, my line's gonna stretch like crazy before it gets to that fish. And I'm not gonna get a great hookup ratio. So some people like throwing braid, and the next line that we're gonna be talking about is fluorocarbon. So fluorocarbon, I buy bulk spools because I use a lot of it. This is what I use the most on my reels. Fluorocarbon has a lot of advantages, but it also has some disadvantages. One of the advantages it has is it's clear, just like that monofilament. It doesn't stretch as much, so we're going to get more sensitivity and a better hookup ratio using this fluorocarbon. Some of the disadvantages of fluorocarbon is that it has a lot of memory. So if I spool up my bait caster, I'm actually going to have to replace that line a lot more than I would my braid or my monofilament because it's going to start causing a lot more backlashes. If I start casting my line, I'm going to start noticing a lot of curlies in my line. That's a lot of memory. My bait's not going to go as far. 
it's actually going to weaken my line a little bit. The other thing, which is sometimes an advantage and sometimes a disadvantage, is this is going to sink. It's heavier than braid. It's heavier than monofilament. It's going to sink into the water. So I'm not able to use this for top waters like buzz baits, spooks, and poppers. But it's going to be a little bit better when I'm throwing bottom baits that are going to be, I need more finesse stuff. I want a straight line going straight to my bait instead of that water sitting floating on top of the surface. I'm going to get a little bit better feel out of this. So if you're first getting into fishing, what I would probably recommend is getting monofilament line. This is very cheap. You can keep it on your reel for a really long time. Might not be the most sensitive. You might not hook up as good, but once you get a fish hooked, you'll get it in the boat. If you're looking for more sensitive applications or stronger applications, I'd probably recommend with going braid. For me, I use a lot of fluorocarbon. That's why I have these bulk spools. To me, it's very sensitive. I like the little bit of stretch and I like how clear it is underneath the water, but it's very expensive and you're going to have to replace the line on your reels a little bit more frequently. So we can actually combine the advantages of either line. A lot of time on my spinning reels, I use my main line as braid, 10 pound braid. That's going to give me a lot of sensitivity going down to my bait. I can feel it really well. I get a good hookup ratio in deep water, but I don't want to use blue line going right to my lure. A fish would see that. So I can actually use a leader. I tie a leader knot and I tie 10, 12 feet of fluorocarbon to it so that it's a little bit more natural in front of that fish. And I actually have a little bit of a shock absorber. This little bit of fluorocarbon is going to stretch a little bit and it's going to allow that fish to stay hooked up when it starts to jump out in the water. Same thing with monofilament braid. I can actually use both. If I want to use a lot of braid on my line, I can actually change my leader and I can actually throw monofilament. I typically do this when I'm throwing a top water lure, such as a spook or a popper because I want to be able to work my bait the same way close to the boat as at the end of my cast. And I can do that really easily with braid. But like we said, I don't want that fish to jump off very easily with this braid. So I'm going to tie a shock absorber with this monofilament. It's going to stretch. It's going to keep those fish hooked up. And opposed to that fluorocarbon, this monofilament's going to float. So I can actually keep my bait on top of the surface and work that bait really well. In this quick video, we went over the different types of lines, some of their advantages and some of their disadvantages what we typically use each line for, and then how you can actually combine the advantages of each line for your specific fishing situation.